All right, snakes. 45,000 bites per year in the U.S. that people actually seek treatment for, right? 8,000 or so from venomous snakes, but only 10 deaths. So the good news is, even though you got bit by a venomous snake, you're probably not going to die from it. So pit vipers. There are rattlesnakes, copperheads, and water moccasins, also known as a cotton mouth. And all three of these guys are, actually all of these, you'll find in this area. Um, you will find all of the venomous snakes in the U.S. here in the local area in Texas. So pit vipers, here's the key. They have kind of heavy bodies. They've got diamond-shaped heads, and they've got this vertical pupil. Um, the the diamond-shaped head is really going to kind of, let me see if I can kind of draw it here. They've got kind of this real, and it may even be more pronounced than that, but it's a real strong diamond-shaped head. Um, they also have a heat-sensing pit on their upper lip uh, between the eye and nostril, kind of in here, I guess, somewhere. That was kind of cool. Maybe that's what that is. Um, they have erectile fangs, which means they, they really kind of only come out when they um, uh, bite you or when they kind of, whatever it is, they snap at you. Um, they have both hemotoxic and necrotoxic venom. So rattlesnakes, and it's still kind of hard to see, but you can see his head kind of juts out a little bit here. He's got that diamond shape. There are 13 species of rattlesnakes with 7,000 bites per year, 9 to 10 fatalities, uh, most deaths from the western, back, uh, western diamondback and the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Copperhead. Deaths are very rare. Um, minimal edema. There will be pain with it, but this is your copperhead. You can see he's got kind of that diamond shape to him as well. And then the water moccasin. Um, there's average of one death per year, uh, mild systemic symptoms. There's potential for severe local tissue injury and necrosis. Um, growing up, I had a friend whose dad had actually lost a few fingers because he was bit by a water moccasin. Um, so you can actually end up with uh, severe local tissue injury. Um, he had to have his fingers amputated. So with pit viper bites, you'll have pain and swelling, progressive edema, bruising, um, and you may even have blood-filled vesicles. Um, I want to point out in this picture, this looks like a poor little kiddo. You can see the two bites, and you can see they've drawn lines. And this is something you guys will get in the habit of doing. Use a permanent marker, so a Sharpie or something, and draw a line and put the date and the time that you drew the line. And you're going to draw that around the swelling. And you can see basically the swelling has progressed, and it lets them basically track how bad is this. You know, how fast is it swelling, and how fast are they reacting. You may also end up with weakness, sweating, nausea, vomiting, tachycardia, hypotension, shock, prolonged clotting, bleeding gums, hematemesis, or, or uh, vomiting blood. Vomiting blood. Melina is blood in the stool, and hematuria is blood in the urine. You can also get numbness, tingling, and other neurological symptoms. Coral snakes. All right, so red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, venom lack. Um, there are false coral snakes and, and true coral snakes uh, all in this area. Um, so you can see there's red and it's next to yellow, and that's bad. Um, they're fairly thin-bodied. They have a very small rounded head. This is the head right there. Oops, nice and curvy. No diamond shape there. Um, they're brightly colored. They have small non-erectile fangs, and it actually injects the venom by chewing on you. Um, the venom is mostly neurotoxic, so it kind of just makes you crazy. You tend to have little or no pain and swelling. You may have some tingling around the bite. Um, with severe um, envenomation, you'll get muscular incoordination, weakness, increased salivation, difficulty swallowing and talking, visual disturbances, and then ultimately respiratory distress and failure and shock. Most deaths in these guys occur from respiratory arrest because the muscles just stop working. Um, this is a neurotoxin, so basically it's going to prevent transmissions uh, to the muscles, so the diaphragm and the intercostals aren't going to work. And that's the reason that you die from these. So what do we do? Calm the victim. Give them some oxygen. Um, depending on where you work, they may ask you to put on a proximal constricting band to help keep the venom kind of localized. Uh, the pros and cons to this, I guess one of the pros is it doesn't become a systemic issue. One of the cons is that especially in your, nec in your necrotizing toxins, so the ones that eat the flesh, you're not providing a bigger sink 
um, for the toxin. So basically, if you let it flow through the entire body, you'll may, you may have universal damage, but it'll be a very, very small amount. As opposed to the possibility of putting a constricting band, keeping the poison down in your fingers, and then losing your fingers because all of the toxin is down there. You do want to clean and bandage the wound, immobilize the bitten area, so splint it and keep it dependent, keep it close to the body and below the heart. Watch for constricting bands, bandages, uh, and splints carefully for edema. So if you put on a constricting band, a bandage, uh, or a splint, watch it carefully. If the patient has any rings or jewelry on, make sure to take those off because the hand and limbs can swell. And then transport them. Transport them to a facility that you know can handle a snake bite. Do not apply ice. Do not apply arterial tourniquets. Do not cut and suck the venom. So don't cut the skin open and try and suck the venom out. Do not use electrical shock. Do not actively attempt to locate a snake, and please, by God, do not bring a live venomous snake to the hospital. That's really a bad choice to do. Um, if it's dead, awesome. Um, still, you know, why bring a dead snake? Take a picture. We all have iPhones. Take a picture of the snake and take the picture to the hospital. Leave the dead snake uh, wherever you found it. Don't bring snakes to the hospital. Oops. Venomous marine life. So in Texas, we have the Gulf Coast, and we do have venomous marine life on the Gulf Coast. So let's take a look. So the fancy word at the top here is called salenterates, and that's a fancy word for jellyfish uh, in the Portuguese man of war. And you can see this guy here, I believe, I'm fairly certain, this is your Portuguese man of war here, because he's got this beautiful blue tentacle uh, that comes down and turns out um, is full of these little stinging cells. Um, these tentacles have these tiny little stinging cells, and it really is. It's an individual cell, and it has this uh, tiny little barb that comes out, and it's it's very fine barb. Um, it causes an intense burning pain. Uh, it can cause red hemorrhagic type lesions. Um, the the venom that's there can cause nausea and vomiting, fever, chills, dyspnea, wheezing, strider, hypotension, and shock. Uh, it can cause cardiovascular collapse. The cool thing, though, it's really easy to kill the stinging cells. You you cover the area of injury with injury with alcohol and vinegar. There are also venomous fish. There's a stingray. Um, this is a, a lionfish or a stonefish or a scorpion fish. I've seen, seen those at aquariums. Um, what you want to do with these is immerse the stung area in hot water. And this is as hot as you can stand it. And that's actually going to deactivate the venom. Sea urchins, they're really cool looking, but they um, are also uh, painful. So uh, immerse the injured area in hot water. Use vinegar to dissolve any embedded spines. Uh, and larger spines may require surgical removal. The last thing I want to kind of mention, I don't have any slides for it, um, but it's little caterpillars. We have fuzzy caterpillars all over the place, and there's even these ones that are called asps. Um, realistically, any of these fuzzy caterpillars, you know, they can cause um, significant pain, really, if you brush up against them. Um, they're not necessarily, you know, super toxic, um, but if you have a patient who calls you because he has uh, been stung by a caterpillar, or brushed up against one of these fuzzy caterpillars, the, the way to treat it is the same as you treat um, the sea urchin or uh, poisonous fish uh, stings, which is you immerse it in hot water. Um, if you put cold on it, it makes the pain much, much worse. So please don't put any cold on any of these because it makes the pain worse, other than the spiders, I guess. We talked about that. Um, but hot water. Uh, hot water is actually the best way to reduce the pain of the caterpillar sting. All right, and that is it. Thank you guys for your attention, uh, and I will see you in class.